If you have a band, grab your resistance band. If you don't have a band, do it without a resistance band. It's perfectly okay. All right, so find uh, what you need and we'll come over onto the mat. We're gonna start, it's gonna be a lot of fun booty work today. So a lot of booty Pilates sculpting today. Okay. So let's take, a, if you have the band, you're gonna place it just around the thighs, just start right above your knees. And we're gonna roll it on back. We're gonna start with some basic bridges. So shoulders pulled back and down. We're just gonna start with a little small pelvic tilt. So let's not even lift the hips yet. So just a deep breath in. Exhale, we're gonna do that Pilates breath. So it depends on how comfortable you feel blowing out through your mouth. Sometimes if we've done a lot of traditional yoga breathing where we feel better breathing out through our nose, it's okay. Just make it a forceful breath. Now, if you can inhale through the nose, take a little bitty rock with your pelvis and then exhale through the mouth like you're blowing out a candle that's up on the ceiling. Okay, so inhale here. Just a little bitty rock, we're rocking the pelvis. So you probably can't see as well here today, but my hand is underneath here. I've got a little bit of arch in my back. And then exhale, scoop the belly, draw the pelvic floor in and up, and then release, inhale. So I want you to start that action by engaging the muscles in the pelvis, pull up and in, blow out, and really engage transverse abdominals. So let's try two more little rocks, inhale, exhale. Right now, legs are just stabilized right here, not doing much of anything, just hanging out. It's all about the pelvis, okay? Now let's bring the feet in closer together, not so much a traditional bridge, right? So you're gonna, gonna have the feet much more narrow, your big toe mounds may be touching, your heels might be slightly separated. Let's try to leave the entire foot on the floor as you draw your toe slightly under and then begin to lift. Take a little open with the knees, just so you're gonna Pull them apart, but keep the feet as much on the floor as you can. I want you to close it back up and then drop back down. So like a basic bridge, but now we're gonna add those feet close together. We're opening up against the resistance, bring it back in and lower down. So we're just opening and closing the knees. We lift up, open, close, bring down. Up, open, close, and down. I want you to try to keep your neck neutral. So your neck will stay in the same position, meaning your head is not gonna turn, right? I try to look every once in a while, but it's when my hips are down. So do that when your hips are down. If you need to see something, try to uh, stave off the temptation <laughs> of turning your head. I've done it too many times. It's not good for your neck when your hips are lifted, all right? So let's take two more. Lift, open, close, back down. Remember your big toe mounds are close together. You're just pushing against that band. Now we're gonna lift up, you're gonna open. All right, so now just lift and lower slightly with your booty. So drop and then squeeze. I'm not lowering all the way down. It's almost a little pulse, but it's nice and slow. So tail is staying kind of slightly drawn under. I want you to press into your big toe mounds a little bit. See if your knees can just push against or your legs push against your band. Feel the glutes working. All right, our hamstrings, of course, our accessory muscles here, they're working as well. I want you to take three more here, up for three, two, and one more, and lower it back down, and release. Just maybe take your knees side to side. You can keep your band there. We're gonna go back into a more traditional kind of basic bridge. So feet separated, just like you would for a basic bridge. And because if you have the band on, you'll notice you really can't take your legs way out. Your feet might go out, but your knees would come in. So I want you just to take your feet in line with your legs. Okay, so maybe about in line with the knees. Shoulders are pulled back. We're gonna anchor through all four corners of the feet. Draw the tail slightly under, lift up, and then lower back down. Just basic bridge first. Inhale, lift. Noticing if you're feeling anything uncomfortable, in this position, especially because we have the band on. So we're working a little differently. We're kind of pushing into that band a bit when we lift up. Whereas usually I'm asking you to squeeze your inner thighs together, right? So we're working a little differently. If you feel any knee pain, you might either release the band or take your feet and adjust them slightly, right? So maybe that means your toes need to turn out a little bit. 
Maybe they need to turn in a little bit. We're all built a little differently. So I want you to find what feels right. Don't just follow my cue, feel it, all right? So now I want you to lift up, take a little hold. Arms are down by your side. See, I'm trying to turn my head. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> Drop your shoulder blades back and down. I want you to anchor through the left foot, pick your right foot up and just bring the knee slightly up. Lower it down, switch sides like a little slow march. Bring it down, lift, and bring it down. So not only are we working our booty, we're getting a little more work here on our quadriceps, the front of your leg as well, pushing against that band. Okay, so lift, like a nice slow march, up. If you ever feel like you need to release your band, you wanna do this without the band, that's okay. I want you to scoop your belly in, pay attention to what's happening in the pelvic belly space. Three more after this one. And two. Good, one more each side. And it's gonna be something extra fun. If you need to take a break, take a break. Land your left foot on the floor. Pick up the right foot, lift and lower just that leg. Eight, seven, breathe, six, five, four. Push into the back of your shoulders, three. You're gonna love this, two. Take one and hold. Now I want you to lift your hip up a little and lower your hip down. Whew. Up, lower it down. I know this is awesome, isn't it? I can hear you from here. Okay, lift and lower. Three, two, and one. Awesome. Lace the right foot on the floor. Both, both feet anchored, lift your hips. Let's take it to the other side. Left leg floats up, lower down. Okay, just like you're kind of taking a little slow march with just that leg. You're just lifting your knee up, lowering the leg down. Up. Lower down. I want you to scoop your belly. Find what's happening here between your hip points and between your pubic bone and your belly button. What's happening there? Kind of scoop it all in like you could tie it all up closer together. Three, two, breathing. Push back into your arms, back into your shoulders. Don't just get flat in that upper body. Hold here. Now, I want you to lift up and down. Down and up. Eight seven, six, five, four, breathe, three, almost there, two, one, and release. Yes, take that band and throw it across the room. Ah, oh, freedom. Draw your knees in if you'd like. Take a little rocking side to side, or you can just take a nice little gentle knee sway. That feels better. Okay, we're gonna roll all the way to one side or you can rock and roll yourself up. I know right now everybody is loving me. All right, you'll love me when your booty and your thighs are strong. Strong thighs, strong heart, right? We get those return from the, the blood returns back from your legs, back to your heart. It's important that we keep them strong and keep those, keep it all pumping, right? So. Also, it takes less strain. It takes a lot of strain off of your heart when you have really strong legs. You don't get winded. You don't get tired, right? We don't have to do a bunch of cardio all the time to get our cardiovascular health in check. We can have really strong legs as well. All right, so I want you to take your ball. If you don't have a ball, you're just going to maybe hold a, um, like a small Pilates ball if you have that or a yoga block. You don't even have to have anything, but if you wanted to take something, just so you feel like you're holding something, you could take that option. All right, so legs are out wide. I'm gonna face you first. So legs out wide, okay, like a nice wide plie. So now when we bend the knees, knees are not moving past your heel to knee alignment. So not moving into this space, all right? I want you nice and wide so that when you drop, the knee is right over the heel. Okay, so I'm just gonna lift and lower. Down, bring it up. Inhale. Exhale. I want you to feel like you could sit down into it. You should not find discomfort in the knees. Ideally, right, unless of course there's something pre-existing that we don't know about, and then don't go so deep, 
okay? But we need to work the legs in order to strengthen the legs. Okay? And adding this little upper body, just kind of increasing your heart rate just a little more. So let's take three, two, and one. Bring it back down. Now the ball in front of you, I'm gonna turn back over here to the side. I want you to bring your legs in just a little bit. Now, your first option, don't have a ball, no problem. Do a walkout plank, right? So you're just gonna walk yourself out. So I'm gonna show you real quick. If you are gonna work on the ball, you're just gonna walk yourself out, find your plank, and then walk it back. All right, so that's our walkout plank. You could do that from your knees as well. Okay, we're gonna take a rollout plank on the ball. So ball in front of you just a little bit, scoop your belly in. It's like you're in a little chair type position. You'll start that position no matter where you are, with or without the ball, okay? Inhale, and then start to roll out or walk down and find your plank. Hold here, inhale, exhale, scoop the belly in, walk or roll it back, good. Inhale, roll it out or walk out. And then exhale, scoop the belly. I want you to feel like there's something attached from your belly button out the back and somebody's yanking, yanking your chain. They're pulling you back up. Good. And especially on those walkouts, you want to make sure your hips are nice and steady, as steady as you can get them. So you're really engaging all the muscles in the pelvic belly space and around your girdle. All right, so walk out, pause. Exhale, pull back. Let's take three. I know I said this was mostly about booty, but you know, we need to work both sides of the body, of course. And this is a nice full body move. Let's take two, and last one, and then bring it back, and we're gonna have a seat. All right, so you can find your seat. We're gonna go back into a bridge lift, but we're gonna use the ball. So if you don't have a ball, hang on, let me grab something. All right, if you don't have a ball, you might find an elevated surface that you can put your feet on. This will also be Similar, but not as unstable, all right? So, so if you want to put your feet up on something, we can lift and lower here. If you're going to be on the ball, I want you to take that ball, place it underneath the knees or underneath the heels. Okay, so you could do elevated, no elevated, or up on the ball, your choice. Shoulders pull back and down, start to scoop the belly, lift up. Watch your knees, make sure that they're not straight all the way, even if your legs are uh, pushed out quite a bit. If you have that ball pretty far away from you, you're never gonna lock your knees all the way. Okay, lower back down. Now, I think, I think something that I like to do, if I don't have a ball, and beside the, uh, aside from the table or little ottoman or something, is you might use one or two yoga bolsters. Because they're a little squishier, they're a little bit more imbalanced, and you might try that, right? If you have bolsters around and you wanna just practice that little bit of instability or a BOSU ball, if you happen to have a BOSU ball, this would be great. So inhale, lift, exhale, lower down. Again, taking your nose toward the sky. So then our next option, take a little break for a moment, hang out. You can draw your knees towards your chest, rock it around. So your next option without the ball will be to lift up and then walk your feet about four little steps forward and then walk your feet four little steps back. All right, so we're gonna be taking the heels further away from your bottom. We'll do the same thing on the ball, but we'll roll it. Okay, so inhale, lift up and exhale, pull it in. Press it out, inhale, lower down. Inhale, lift, exhale, scoop the heels in, push it out, and lower down. So if you're on the mat, you're lifting, you're in bridge, walk out, one, two, three, four, and walk back, four, three, two, one. We lift up, scoop, roll or step, push it out, and back down. So it should be about a four count on both directions. Inhale. In four, three, two, one, and down. Four, three, two, 
one lift one two three four and out four three two one up one two and then three four out four three two one so we're having to slow it down even on the ball so if you're walking you're feeling that if you're rolling you're definitely still feeling that you're rolling it slow not fast okay give me two more up one two three four and down two three four one more one two three four out two three and four yes feel it feel it slap it up okay now you can get rid of that fun ball and set this whole situation off to the side now let's take a weight or weighted item or no weight at all again your choice all right so shoulders back and down you're going to be resting either on your forearm we're going to be doing some leg kicks here so either on your forearm or down by your side you can take one i would just take one if you're taking a weight take one light weight and it could, again you might drop the weight or it could be a water bottle or something you're just going to hold on your leg in a moment we don't have to have it just yet so we can take the toes on the bottom leg Turn them under just a little bit if you can take that external rotation. If you feel like you need something under your hip, unfold a blanket, give yourself some cushion. Be mindful of your neck. Maybe you need to drop it all the way down. If you start to rise up, watch your shoulder. Okay, so it's ahead of your, your elbow, ahead of your shoulder, just a little bit, and then push. All right, so now we're going to get ready. Top leg is going to be long. Inhale, bring it forward. One, two. Give it a little flex, push it back and pause. Inhale. So I want you to create a nice little hip extension here, pulling the belly in and pushing the heel back, stabilizing, making sure your shoulders are not swaying forward and back. Exhale. So this is one of those fun moves. I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, right? There's a machine at the gym and I don't, it's a little hip extension machine that looks like it's on a big circle, peg circle that you can adjust. And that little pad would either go on top of your leg that you could push up, strengthen your hip flexors, or you could put it behind your leg and push back for hip extension. And I used to love to watch people on that machine because they would do this whole thing on it. I'm like, what are you working? I don't know. Most of the time, I don't know what people are working when they're at the gym. But and you have people slow down. Let's take two more, all of us. So when we slow down and we get centered and we find our civility, then we're like, whoa, that's harder than that big movement. Yes, it is. All right, stop here. We're gonna rotate toe, knee up. Your feet come in front of you just a little bit. It could be almost like a pike position here rather than all the way back straight in line, whichever feels better for you. If you tend to feel clicking and popping in your hip, I would take the leg slightly forward. So let's lift up. And then close it up, lower down. Okay. Inhale. So once again, if you're on your forearm, I want you to push into it rather than sinking into it here. I want you to push and feel like you could take your bottom waist away from the floor a little. Imagine that you're getting this top leg longer than the bottom leg. So every time you close, really find that emphasis. All right, three, two, one more and give it a little pause very good all right little bitty circle so you're going to point through your toe okay little bitty ones right there in line with your hip breathe again we're trying to imagine that we're just kind of drawing that little circle with our big toe and that our body is staying super steady and still and now reverse your little circle maybe the size of a small play ball like that little pilates ball if you have it about that size of your circle. Scoop in deep. And now we're gonna reverse it again, but now we're gonna sweep it back up and around. Whew, big circle, like big as your balance ball now. Nice and straight and big. Making sure that you're staying steady in your upper body. If you're on your elbow, you need to come down, feel free to do so. Okay, so let's reverse, inhale. Exhale, up and around. Woo. So not only are we getting the glutes, the outer thigh, 
Oh, we're getting that outside waist. You feel it? You're getting that oblique. Let's take one more. And back to center. All right, shake it out a little bit. We're going to bend the knees. I am coming down. If you're not down, that's okay. But I'm going to rest down here for a minute. So you're going to bring your knees up in line with your hips, right? So then you look at your heels. They're kicked out. So if you use your mat as a guide, your knees and your heels would be along the long edge of your mat. Your knees and your hips would be in line like you were sitting in a chair. So here's where the magic comes in. You can opt for something weighted or not. We're going to hold it closer to the knee than the hip. Why? Because this is our lever, right? We all remember this, right? So in school, how we learned that if you put something further away from the lever, you have to lift, it takes more effort to lift it, right? If it's up here near the fulcrum part of the joint, look, I don't even have, it doesn't do anything. All right, so let's place it here. Feet are flexed. You're rolling slightly forward with your weight. Okay? Inhale, just lift, notice knee and heel in line, no higher than your hip. It's a little bitty lift, that's it. Okay, so make sure your knees are pulled up a bit. Lift and lower. So I want to avoid any rocking back. If you need your head down, take it down. It's just a lift up and a lift and a press down. That's it. So lift and lower. Deep breath. Now let's take four more right here. Four, three. So you could do this with a resistance band as well. Two, but we will move our leg a little bigger in a moment. And one, hold it. Now, just drop your heels, your toes and heels toward each other. Your knees are still open, so now just lift and lower on just your knee. So we're gonna keep the big toes or the heels attached, whichever, I like the heels, and lift and close. A little butterfly lift. Open, close. If you feel like you need to drop that weight, you don't need that extra resistance, that's fine, right? It's because you don't have to have resistance to feel this. So continue to pull in and up through the center of your core. Let's take three. Whew, I'm feeling it burn. Two and one. Now hold it here. I want you to pick up your heel, dive your knee down, and now dive your heel down. So it's knee and then heel. Knee and heel. That's it. You're just diving the knee down and then tapping your heel. That's it. Knee, knee, heel, heel. Knee, knee. It sounds kind of fun to say. And it's burning, so I'm dropping that. <laughs> Let's do you have my permission. Let's go three, two, and one. Now we're gonna hold it, hold it, bring your knee in, and now I want you just to push it back into that hip extension again. So bring the knee in and then push it back into that hip extension. Inhale, exhale. If you drop your weight and you feel like, man, maybe I can give it a little more. Take it back. It's okay. It's okay to drop it and to pick it back up. <sighs> or just to forget about it all together. <sighs> Last three. <sighs> Two. Oh, and one. And release. Woo, all right. You can send that leg in front. Let's give it a little shake out right there. And since we're already here... We might as well work out in the thigh a little bit, right? It's important. So this leg is in front, top leg that you were just working. So bottom leg is reaching out long. I want you to float it up just a little bit. See if you can rotate the toes down a bit. Deep breath in and now just squeeze both of your inner thighs together and bring it back down. So checking out your top waist, make sure it's long rather than letting it curl up towards you. So think about creating space here on the side of your waist. You might feel the bottom waist get a little lighter when you do that. I want you to scoot your bottom leg back just a little bit. It's going to float forward, so scoot it back. Let's try four more. Four, three, two, give it a little hold, and a little circle, a little circle for six, five, four, three, two, reverse that circle, six, Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work. Bring it all up. Lift up 
and we'll shift over to the other side. On your way over to the other side, you might take a moment and just kind of pull your knees in and rock around on that hip. Just kind of like you're creating a little circle on the outside of that hip to help kind of massage the bone to the muscle to the floor. It feels pretty nice. All right, here we go. Other side. So I'm gonna start, you can have your head all the way down. You know the drill now. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. Toes or legs together, I'm gonna to shift them forward just a tiny bit. I'm gonna create this little bit of a pike position. Watch your shoulder if you're lifted. Press up and out of it and get that waist long. All right, so toes now are just rotated forward, but I'm reaching out through the foot. So give it a little pulse, one, two, and then pull it back. <sighs> Inhale, one, two, exhale, pull it back. So I want you to think about keeping your waist really long, <clears throat> keeping your leg really long. Inhale, like you could still lengthen out this top leg longer than your bottom leg. <sighs> so we're working core stabilization, those muscles kind of gripping around the bone. This can help strengthen the bone. Right, so it's not just impact that can help strengthen the bone. That's why uh, weight resistance, using weights, adding any kind of resistance against the bone can be helpful to strengthen it. So creating just that resistance by engaging the muscles will do the trick as well. Let's go three, two, one more. Good job, let's stack those legs right here. Rotate the knee out, the toes up. Inhale, lifting straight up and straight down. I am still at an angle though, so especially if you feel any clicking or popping in your hip, first try to establish that your hips are really set, that you're pulling the belly in and up, you're engaging the pelvic floor, and then try to find the space where you hear no clicking or popping. Sometimes it just means we're a little imbalanced, maybe we need a good adjustment. Other times, you know, we're just, well, like I said, we're all put together a little different. My hips are most always a little off and one side will click. But if I focus enough and really engage these little small muscles that are surrounding the pelvic space and helping to hold everything in place, then I have to go slow and really think about it. Let's go three, lengthen it out. Two, now I just feel it in my booty, exactly where I should be feeling it. And one. Very good. Go ahead and release. Now, little circles. Let's go one direction. Breathe. Take about three more. Two and one. Now reverse, little circle. Oh, this side, you're gonna feel it quicker than the last side. It was already stabilizing before. So yes, you're not imagining things, it is true. Take two and one. Now we're going to reverse again. Sweep it up, back and around. I'm coming down. I'm coming down for this one. It's ooh, feeling it. And my right side tends to be a little crankier most of the time. It's where I have a little piriformis issue. So I'm going to honor that and give it a little space. All right. Let's reverse. Inhale. Sweep up and around. As big or bigger than their balance ball. Nice and steady. Try to hold belly in, but still breathe. We're not just sucking it in, we're engaging. That corset, girdle muscles around your waist. Let's take one more. And then release it. All right. Bring those knees up. Here we go. So, so use the long edge of your mat. Your toes are kicked out in front not on your mat, you're 90 and 90. Take your weight if you like, and we're gonna shift our weight just a little bit forward so that we're not rolling back. All right, so lift. I want you to check it out. It's like you still had a band around your legs. If you had that band around your legs, you would not be able to lift much further probably than hip height, all right? So imagine that your heel stays in line with your knee. You're just lifting and lowering. Find the breath. The breath will carry you through. Get that oxygen in the blood. Two more. Oh, feeling that side. And then last one. 
Now, I want you to just bring your heels together. A little butterfly, lift, open, good. Breathe through it. You've got this. We've all got this today, I know it. And your booty's gonna thank me for it later. See, we're not just sitting around during this quarantine time. We're working our buns. Let's take two more. And one, now, hold here, dive it down. Knee to knee, heel to heel. Knee to knee, heel, heel. Okay. My weight's going down, because I don't wanna use it. <laughs> knee and heel. I'm feeling it just fine without that. So let's go three, two, and one. Now draw your knee in and push the heel away behind you. In and then give it a little extension, press back. You also have to find a little balance here. You might notice, right? You push back, you have to kind of shift your center of balance so that you're not shifting all the way forward with your chest, but you're able to kick back and engage without the whole body moving. Last three, two, last one. Very good. Let's bring that leg up. Let's cross it and let the bottom leg straighten. Little inner thigh work. Take that waist, get it long, maybe lighten that bottom waist a little, and now lift it up and lower down. So not just lifting your bottom leg. I want you to think about squeezing the inner thighs toward each other. So top leg has some work to do too. And then you're, of course, pulling in and up through pelvic floor, belly to spine, engaging all the way around. Breathe with it. Last three, two, Give me one more, hold it, reach out through the toes, little circle, six, five, four, three, two, one, and reverse, six, five, four, three, two, one, very good, go ahead and let's lift up and we'll rock it back over just so that we can get on that hip for a second, Woo, all right. Come on over to your belly. Yes, we are almost done, I promise. But over onto the belly, because it wouldn't be, wouldn't be right if we didn't do the last move. So you're gonna rest your head on your hands. Make sure that your neck is long and your shoulders are relaxed. I want you to push down to that hollow space around your pelvic bowl. So we tend to kind of hit, lift in that hip crease a little. I want you to push down, see if you can kind of flatten it out. Keeping that anchor, just bend your left knee and give it a little kick. One, two, and then see if you can pick that knee up a little and float your leg back. Okay, so switch. One, two, and then reach back. Good, one, two. When you're kicking, really push down into that hip and pelvic space so that you're not tempted to hollow that space out. One, two, and reach. Try to keep those shoulders relaxed. Last four. Three. Your glutes should feel so strong right now. Two. Last one. Let's take a little pause. Bring your hands out to the side. Rest your head to one side. So I just want to end with a nice little chest opener with still some, a little bit of work. All right, so let's kick both legs. Now you can pick just one at a time. Let's try that first. So to pick up just your left leg, reaching your foot to the wall behind you, engaging your glute. Don't just lift it. I want you to engage your left glute and then just try to float that leg up a little bit. I want you to sweep your hands back like they're holding the balance ball behind you. Your gaze is toward the top of your mat or just slightly ahead of you. Neck is nice and long, good. I want you to squeeze back up. You can hold the balance ball tighter behind you. And now switch legs. Switch. Breathe, good. Switch, legs are super straight. Belly is uh, pushing up and in still, even here, pubic bone down, hips anchored, 
Let's try a little bit faster for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Woo! Shake it out. Circle out your ankles. Take your feet side to side. Let's bring the hands back underneath the shoulders or chest. You might turn your head to the other side first. And then when you're ready, you're going to start to push yourself up. Walk your knees back underneath. Start to maybe create a little bit of rounding and shifting of your hips. I like to then take it side to side, getting a little deeper into the outside of that hip that we worked. We're working all of our gluteus muscles today. The internal rotators, the external rotators, the extenders, the whole situation, the whole shebang. All right. So let's press it back, hips to heels, nice little child's pose. You can reach up and over, walking your hands to one side, get that nice long side reach. And let's come back to center and over to the other side. And then back up. Let's just have a seat. I feel like we need a little extra stretch today, so we're going to take just a little extra time okay, just for this little extra stretch. So you can sit up on a blanket if you like to lift your hips. I'm going to take mirroring you. I'll take left leg. You can take whichever feels right. It feels so appropriate that I'm going to mirror. So if you want to take left leg and follow me, we'll sit up nice and tall. Just kind of hug it in first and then start to turn towards your left. So turning your chest toward that bent knee space. And then maybe even kind of hugging it with your arm. The crook of your elbow might be able to wrap around it. As you're turning, pull that left shoulder back. You're looking over to the side of the room. Your left hand might just hang out behind you for a little support if you like, like a little kickstand. Take another breath. I want you to come back to center. So switch sides. One of my favorite stretches to do, and it can be either seated or you could be maybe, you know, seated on a couch. You could do this on your couch if you wanted. Sit up nice and tall, pull the knee in, get the heart high, and then start to kind of hug it in a little deeper. Then maybe start to eventually turn your shoulders, not just your head. I want you to pull your back shoulder around and maybe kind of hug it with your forearm. Your other hand can go behind you for a little support. Take a big deep breath. Give your booty a little bit of gratitude for moving you around today, for keeping you safe and healthy because those strong glutes are exactly what helps keep your back safe. Strong glutes, strong quads, hamstrings as well. Okay, But our lower body helps keep our upper body healthy and safe. So give it a little love today. Give it a little appreciation. Let's reach up and over and then come back and switch sides. Now, as you come back up, I want you to take one big deep breath in, sweep your arms. Find an appreciation for yourself as well today for doing something good for you. Give it just a moment and bow, honoring your own guide, your own inner teacher and voice. And I thank you for being here.